What is up? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over how to lazy load your images when you get your data from Prismic and your frontend is some sort of a Vue.js frontend. In my case, I'm using Gritsum, but I'm not using the Gritsum G image tag. I'm using my own. Um, I've done this because of the way Prismic uh, represents the data to me and um, because of some super fancy features they have that don't really work with the Gritsum image tag. So without further ado, let's go into a simple script that is um, usable in Vue.js or outside of Vue.js. That's an important part. And let's see how I did it. No, this is not a sponsored video. All right, let's kick this off. So let's start by looking at my website itself to see how the lazy loading is working. So when I go to this page, you see that the first four images just loaded in with a little animation and they are here in the, in the network tab. So when I scroll down, you'll see more loading in. They all have some fun animations because why not, right? So um, every time I scroll past um, something that has an image, it loads it in. If I don't scroll there or I'm not close to it, it will just not load it. So let's have a look how I did it. So as you can see, this here is my, is this is the videos page. Here I have this lazy image tag. Um, I'm using um, a Vue.js component here that wraps some native JavaScript to load those images the native way like more vanilla, more old school. And I'm doing this because of how Prismic is giving me the data. Because Prismic, um, let's just, before diving in here, I'll show you how Prismic gives me this information for some of the images. As of also that, that explains why I did it this way. When I go to Prismic, this is one of my blog posts. This is basically one big rich text, right? And in my rich text, you see, I added an image and I added another image. And what this does, we'll just show you here. There's that image, and then there is another image, and you see the lazy load. But, so what Prismic does, it represents that whole rich text area in JSON objects. So this header is a JSON object. This is a paragraph, it's a JSON object. This is an image, it's a JSON object. And then what that does, once it goes into Gritsum, it uses something called an HTML serializer. And this HTML serializer grabs that um, JSON from the field and converts it into HTML. But the moment you do that, there is no runtime Vue.js. So I could actually not add my lazy image Vue.js component because Vue.js was rendered before and I just add something in and I, it just wouldn't know that it existed because that's just the nature of how Gritsum works. So what it does, I actually, or I, I make my custom HTML serialization for this, and I create my own image tag. And then I have to add, attach um, vanilla JavaScript to lazy load those images. So that's why I chose to have my core as um, vanilla, and then I just wrap Vue.js Vue around it. So let's dive into how that Vue.js component works. Um, I'll go over the most important um, uh, props, but not all of them, because it will. It's, this video is just about the lazy loading part, not about how you do responsive images. That's a whole different story. So really important for lazy images is actually the ratio, 16 by 9. Um, because I'm saying this, like, well, in my case, this image is 16 by 9, right? But if the image is not loaded yet, you need to know, I'm using this CSS trick to use 16 by 9 and actually create a little box around the image that has space, that takes its space before the image is loaded in. Because if you don't do that, if you don't use that CSS hack, actually, uh, if the image is not there, it doesn't take space. So the moment it loads in, it shifts your whole interface and it just looks super bad. Um, I know Chrome just came out with this ratio option in CSS, but it's not for all browsers yet. So I, I left it out for here. Um, so ratio, alt, URL, and then we have widths and sizes. Widths is a prop that I'm using for concatenating the source set. I'll get there in a sec how that works. We, don't, don't, we won't go too deep, but I'll show you. And then we have sizes, which is the normal thing in um, responsive images. So let's have a look at that lazy image.view. 
So let's start by the template and then we go into the scripts and then I'll go into the heart of how the lazy loading works a little bit after and you'll see that is actually the vanilla code. First of all, my first image tag here is V if native lazy supported because native lazy loading is starting to be supported in a lot of browsers now. So why not, right? So if this is true, I'll show you what that test is in a second. If it's true, I bypass all of the code you just saw and I'm just literally adding loading is lazy. The source set, I still concatenate. I'll show you that in a bit. And I've had to do a little trick to add the width and the height because if you say loading equals lazy and you don't give a width and height, the browser will not know about that ratio that we just discussed. So it cannot actually work because it also needs to keep space for that image tag, right? So if you give width and height, um, it can calculate that ratio and then it works. Um, normally when I don't have loading equals lazy because my I'm using the normal old school images, that ratio is set by my own CSS. So the only thing you'll have to do is like, in my case, I took that ratio that I give anyways, 16 by nine, and I grabbed that ratio for the width, which is the first number. And then I just multiply it by 10. So in this case, my width and height are 160 by 90. And it's just for ratio. And if it's below 10, it doesn't work. So I cannot add 16 by nine. This is just in the HTML spec. Um, so that's basically, we're not gonna look into this one now because if I do this, none of the other code is executed. So this is the more important one. So as you can see, I'm not just using source set and not just using sizes, but I'm saying data dash. Um, so this is where the vanilla JavaScript comes in a little bit. So I'm basically utilizing the HTML to keep state of my source set and my sizes. And then the moment the image is intersecting with the window, so when I want to load it, I remove the data dash, add the normal source set property. And because of that, the browser will just say, hey, I know what to do with that. Let me just load it. Um, if this was purely a Fuji.js component or a React component for that matter, I would have done it pretty differently, right? You can keep state in the Fuji.js component itself. You have a data um, function. You can do a lot of cool things there, but this is kind of a wrapper around it. So I wanted to keep it the same um, as in the other place from the, the prismic output of the HTML. I'll show you that in a second so you can understand what, what I mean by that. And okay, let's go over the props of this component first, and then we'll go over the image tools that I've written to make it all work. So basically we have the ratio we discussed. Of course, we have an alt, we have a URL, we have sizes, widths, as we just said, this is to create the, um, the source set. Then I have caption. And this is just a little Boolean because what I'm using normally is a figure and a fig caption. So if caption is true, I just put the alt as a caption. Um, that looks like this. There's a little caption here. And it's just nice for accessibility, right? A little caption here. Um, let's see, what else? Yes, then we have the preload. Um, this is actually a pretty important one. Um, what I do, I use this preload. It can be, in this case, it's just an empty um, pixel that I use but it can also be potentially um, a blurry version of your image. So this is like your fallback. So the normal source of the image is actually preload, which is in my case, just an empty GIF, a pixel. For you, it can be something else. And um, so this is to make the browser think when there's no source set and no sizes that this is the image. So it doesn't give you any errors because in let's say Internet Explorer before it became Chromium, it actually would show you that like that broken image um, thing on the top left of your image. So this is to make sure you don't get that error, but it's also a nice feature because potentially you have a super low quality blurry version of your image that you can put there. And then the moment the source that comes in, you can actually see the new image. Okay, so um, as you can see on mounted, I load my images and there's a couple of smaller helper functions to create the source set. But you see those functions, they actually come from an import here. So let's have a look at my image tools. 
So image tools is, is used all over my website. So it's in the view component, but it's also when I render the rich text of Prismic, when I just get HTML and I still need to lazy load the images. Um, so this is the heart of lazy loading. And as you can see, this is not very Fuji-esque like, this is like completely native. Like I look at the document, I get all the images that are image with the class lazy, but not lazy done. Because if the lazy loading has been done, I add this class then I don't want them because I'm attaching an intersection observer to each image. I don't want to double that. So that's why we have this. We'll get to set image in a second. So I find all images on the page. I loop over them. And if intersection observer is in the window, if it exists, I will attach an observer to that image. And if it starts to intersect with my window, it will say, hey, if it's intersecting, let me just set my image and then unobserve. So unobserve means once it's loaded, I will never check it again. Um, and then if I do not have intersection observer, like in, I think in Safari at the moment and some older IEs, I will just load the image um, immediately. I don't really care because it's such a small percentage of my users. So set image is very old school, but it works really well. So if that image actually has lazy done attached, it won't do anything. But if it doesn't, what it will do is we will set the source set of that image based on that data source set that it used to have. And the same with sizes. So it basically sets, it, it takes the data property and adds the normal property. And then it adds lazy done. So I'm kind of using the state of those classes to see if something has happened. And the nice benefit is also that I attach a couple of fancy animations for the images on that lazy done and lazy class here. So this is all you need to have lazy loading images across the board. It's pretty easy. Um, then let's check this one. So native lazy support. And currently I set it to false because I want to show you my code. But if I don't have that, then it's this. So if loading is in HTML element pro prototype, um, it means your browser actually understands lazy loading natively. And in my case, it will basically kill off all this code and it will just use the loading equals lazy but let's keep it like this for now because otherwise i cannot show you and then here i have the get source set so um, this is a combination of the base url of the image and the sizes array we saw earlier which is here so the url that's the base url of the image and this is my width so what i want my source set to look like is that image uh, based on a certain size with 300 W behind it, right? That's how source sets work. So let's have a quick look at this source set, for example. So this source set is the image URL and then um, 300 W behind it, comma separated. Um, so now comes the magic of Prismic because Prismic gives us image IX, which is a software as a service that is similar to Cloudinary, for example that um, will render different sizes of your images and optimize them in a really good way. So what I have, I have one URL of my image, which um, looks like this image, for example, and I want to render it in 300, 400, 500, 600, and 680. So there's a bunch of versions of that image. So the only thing I have to do in image IX is say, this is my base URL of the image, and then I add the W for width, and that's the same as that size that you see here. And then, of course, to make sure that this source set is working, we add size W comma behind it. So now you would see base URL and width is 300 space 300 W. And then I always just render this, but I don't want the latest comma. So I'm slicing the, 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 the string and then I'm removing this last um, variable of the last comma, I mean, um, because when you leave that comma in, it just doesn't work. Um, thank you, HTML. Um, so having Prismic, it's amazing because it gives you this image IX thing. And let me just really quickly show you um, what that is like. So this image here, this is my base URL. Prismic adds auto compress and format for you. So compress is to 
do like some automated quality optimization and format is to say hey you have chrome let me render you webp and then i add the w for width so i can add 680 oh I have to, now it's the original because it's not the correct number there's 680 or if i don't add a width it's the original size so i can make different versions of this image just by appending something to the url um, for you if you don't have image ix it will be different but if you have prismic you get it for free so make sure you use it and actually that's kind of it for um the fugs component here so now let's have a look as to why is it actually uh what, why do i use this native code right so here is this html serializer we spoke about before so what this does is when um prismic renders the html um, from your rich text component it actually gets a whole chunk of json that represents that text area and in my case if the type of thing it's rendering is an image i say okay i'm going to overtake what you do natively yourself i'm going to write my html so in this case this really looks like that fugis um, thing i was just uh, rendering right so i actually have data source set and there's like a figure and there's a fig caption so here you can see there's my figure there's my aspect ratio that we just spoke about but it just get the original width and height from prismic then i check if it's native lazy supported and i use source set if not data source set and then here's the get source set url uh, function we just discussed with the base url and the sizes and then here i just add i, I kind of hard code my um, sizes property here because you know for my blog it's always the same it's always here it's always looked like this. So the sizes, they change like that. It's always the same. And then my alt, my title, um, SEO tools has started to complain that I didn't have title. So I added it. Then my default source, that is in this case, this empty pixel. Then um, if native, lo lo native lazy is not supported, I add my lazy class. So I, start, I can actually lazy load. And then this width and height. Um, and of course the fake caption. And in this case, I know I want it, so I just add it in. So I overrule uh, the HTML Prismic would normally render for me by doing my own. And then because of that lazy class, uh, my code can now actually start lazy loading this thing. And I'm doing that with a little mix-in. And it's super simple. Like when it's mounted on the next tick, actually lazy load my images. That's the lazy loading function that we just looked at. And this is how I use that. So when I go to my writing template, like this is my blog post page, right? So you don't see much. Um, let me just, there we go. So actually this is my blog post content. This is the rich text we just saw. And then here I have a little mix in for images. So basically when mounted, because my um, mix in works on mounted, it will actually fire the load images from image tools. So image tools is here, load images. So basically on mounted of my blog post, it will try to find the image.lazy and then lazy load it because that HTML exists, so it works. So that's a became a pretty long video, but it actually explains how to integrate the Prismic um, images um, in FuGS and natively. And it's also, if you wanted to, you can extract um, just the FuGS component from this and use it in other places. Um, I guess that's it. So thank you for watching. And um, if you like this type of video where I actually show some code, um, please leave a like and put something in the comments so I can maybe do more of it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.